turn, please, this morning in the Bible. Don't you thank God for the Bible? Where would we be without the Bible? Whew. Lost, confused. We don't want to think about it. But let's go to Ephesians, the uh, fourth chapter. Hmm. Where's my notes? Oh, my, what will we do? <laughs> Somebody go look on my desk down there and see if my notes are there. We'll be all right. Don't, uh, don't get concerned. <laughs> it's not like we use them that much. Hallelujah. Um, I remember the first time I spoke at a church. Phyllis, she's already piping up. I, uh, we had gone to uh, Rama and had only been there for a few months and was home for Christmas break. And uh, I was not a preacher. I mean, I was a fighter. I didn't know the scripture and just, you know, I'm beginning to learn a few things. And uh, I, did, I didn't think of me as being a preacher. I just felt like the Lord dealt with me to go to Ramah. And uh, so we went. Well, this particular church in near the, a little town near where we grew up asked me to speak on Sunday morning when we came in. And I told them I would. Of course, I'm... You know, Ned and the first reader. <laughs> and um, we're, I'm driving, we're driving around Saturday in town in a little local station. I turned it on. And they said, come to such and such church Sunday morning and hear Reverend Keith Moore. <laughs> I about run off the road. I thought, <laughs> I thought, Reverend Keith Moore, dear Lord, I'm a preacher. Now, that may sound strange to you, but that's exactly what happened. I thought, God, is this what you had in mind? I bet it should have dawned on me already, but. So anyway, man, I, I worked on that little message. And I must have had five pages of notes. And, and uh, I went for about five minutes, and then I. Repeated everything I'd said. <laughs> but I was so concerned that I was going to lose my place that I kept my finger on my notes. They were handwritten. I didn't, we didn't have a typewriter or computer, either one. And so I kept my finger on my notes. And I was so concerned I was going to lose my place that once in a while I thought, well, I'm just standing in this one spot. I ought to move a little bit. So I'd put another finger there and I'd walk around like this. <laughs> and I'd say something. <laughs> and then I, I'd put a finger there and I'd, I'd walk around here. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? <laughs> Well, things have changed. <laughs> you just, huh? So it was a good message? Didn't last too long. It was about 20 minutes, I guess. Thanks. thanks. To, but you know, if we hadn't have done that one, wouldn't have done the next one, or the next, or the next, or the next, and a new... Um, that next year in Ramah, uh, began to have opportunities to minister. And then the year after that, and the year after that, about two years into it, uh, well, excuse me, it was more like, more like five when this particular thing, I, I saw some things in the Word and in God and got on the floor praying about it one time. I said, Lord, I, I see, 
I need to develop. And I see associations and environment are a factor. I said, Lord, put me in the situations and, and, and connect me with the right associations and the people that will allow me and enable me and cause me to grow the quickest and yet the most solidly. And it wasn't but a few months until I had an opportunity to minister in a healing school and prayer school and then something else and then do music on Wednesday nights and then I was given uh, five courses to teach in the Bible school. <laughs> and after a few days of that, I got up to where I'm speaking. At one point, I, I spoke 25 times a week. That's a lot. That's a lot. And after a few weeks of that, I'm laying in the floor going, God, <laughs> Lord, this just seems like too much. He said, you asked for it. <laughs> and I realized this is how I'm going to grow. Right. See, a lot of times people, they, when they hear, think about growing, they think about them sitting somewhere and everything falling on them. No, you got to get with the program. Yeah. Right. I said, you got to get with the program. Yes, you got to get up and get with it and stay after it. The only way to develop in prayer is to pray. pray. Are you with me now? The only way to develop in sowing and reaping is to Sow and reap. The only way to develop in ministry is to minister. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. The only way you get good at anything is you do it so much and for so long until it becomes second nature to you. Hallelujah. You don't get that way by doing it four or five times. Anything. Right? You got to do it. And in the beginning, it's not fun because you don't know how and you don't feel able. But if you don't go through those times, you don't get to the times where it flows easy. Right? And your confidence grows. So whatever it is God's called you to do, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Hmm? Don't let, and, and preachers, ministers, listen to me. The devil's such a liar. I don't care how long you've been going. I don't care how much God uses you. You get through. Nearly every time the enemy comes sit on your shoulder and say, that was lousy. Preachers, you know what I'm talking about? He'll come try to tell you, that was loud. You did a poor job on that. Always trying to discourage you. No, don't you let him do it. I said, don't you let him do it. You stir yourself up. You say, no, maybe I didn't do as good as I could, but I'm going to keep doing it till I get it. I'm going to stay with it. Right? I'm just going to do it again. Get up and do it better. Get up and put more into it. And if you'll have that kind of heart, I'm telling you, God will grace you. And you will improve whatever. I'm, we're not just talking about preaching. We're talking about whatever God has called you to do. You'll improve until you excel. Right? Until you excel. Nobody starts off at the top. Nobody. Everybody starts off at the bottom. If you don't start at the bottom, you stay at the bottom. But you start and you improve. And you step up, and you improve, and you step up, and you improve. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this for, you know, 20-something, 20 25 years or whatever now. And I'm just now beginning to feel like we are, uh, you know, know a little bit about what we're doing. And uh, not, to, not to even remotely say you've, you've arrived where you could be. No, just kind of beginning to get a handle on it. I mean, you know, flying. I've been flying 10 years now, and I just barely feel like I'm, you know, safe to ride with. <laughs> I'm serious. It's just, there is so much to learn and know, even about some natural things, and how much more about the precious things of God. So uh, all of us are growing and developing, and uh, the key is to stay with it. Say it out loud, I'm staying with it. Uh, have you found your scripture in Ephesians 4? Well, they found my notes, so glory to God. We can go on. Ephesians 4. 
We begin last week on a new series, and we were excited about it. Do you remember? Yeah. Woo, yeah. Woo. Now, if y'all hadn't been here on uh, Friday nights, man, where are you? Because we are, we're stepping it up. You need, you need to get a hold of it. Uh, CDs are available. It's, it's free. You can download it online as well. Take advantage of it. Feed your faith and spirit. Ephesians 4 said, verse 11, Ephesians 4, 11, God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, building up of the body of Christ. Till or until we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Now notice, he, he didn't say unity of doctrine. If you're waiting until everybody's doctrine gets exactly parallel and in agreement, you, you're going to be waiting a long time. But we can all grow up in faith, right? And all have faith. He said, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. What's, what does it mean, perfect man? This is talking about full-grown man. I think it's, don't let this word perfect throw you. If you look it up in other translations, you'll see what we're talking about. Mature man. Completely developed man. And when he says man, there are male man and female man. Both. Fully matured, a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What would a Christian look like when they grow up? Jesus, the Christ. He is the perfect example of a mature one, one who is fully developed. Now here's the great news. The, the servant is not above his master. But what did the scripture go on to say? Everyone that is perfect. Now see, people let that word throw them. They think, well, ain't nobody perfect. Well, then why does, what does that verse mean? The Bible says, be ye perfect. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Most of the church don't even believe that's possible. Then they don't believe that scripture should even be in there. Well, the Lord knows what he's talking about. Right? Perfect has to do with being complete and entire and mature, growing up. Can you grow up? Well, when you grow up, what are you going to be like? You're going to be like the master. The more mature you are, the more you'll be like him. That you, that, uh, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It paints a picture uh, like a, a little boy uh, looking up to his dad who's a full-grown man and thinking about he wants to be as tall and as big as he is. Well, that's you and me looking at Jesus. He's our example. He's our call to grow up and to be just like him. Right? He went on to say that we henceforth be no more children. Now, you have to look up the words in the Greek to see uh, children because sometimes the word child can mean, can mean lad. It can mean child of six, seven, eight years old. This word means little one, infant, one who's not talking, baby. That we, that we no longer... Uh, be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up. Everybody say it. May grow up. May grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ the anointed one, is it God's will for us to grow up? Yes. Can we grow up? Yes. Do you need to grow up yes. from where you are right now? Have you got room to grow? Yes. Do you need to grow? Yes. The answer is yes. Yes. 
Now, now back up and, and, and think about this entire passage. When, when the Lord ascended on high, He gave gifts unto men, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, teachers. Why? 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 Why is there a ministry? Why is there a local church? Why are there ministry gifts? Should we have them? See, there's some people that tell, try to tell you we shouldn't even have them. Oh, I don't believe in organized church. I just commune with God in nature. And we all have the Spirit. So nobody needs to be over anybody else. Well, that's their dumb idea. <laughs> God has a plan. It's in the Word. He said you are not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Right? And He gave gifts and He told you to submit yourselves to those who have the rule over you. Why, why is there a structure? Why is there called people and anointed people and ministry gifts? Why? For? What? Read it. What? For? For humanitarian organizations and social functions. So we can say we're a member of such and such church. So we can have somewhere to go to wear our nice clothes and hats. And, and no, no. So we can salve our conscience that we went to church and hope that we're safe. No, no. Why should you be here this morning? Why should I be here this morning? To be perfected, which means what? To be matured, to be completed. And what does the whole passage go on to say? Keep reading it. For the perfecting of the saints. Verse 13. Until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect, mature man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children. Can you see that large portions of the church have completely missed this? They don't get up in the morning thinking, I got to go to church because I got to grow up. Do they? No, I got to go sit under my pastors. I got to go feed under this ministry gift, that, that ministry gift. I got to go do this. I got to go work. I got to go get involved. I got to go here because I got to grow up. I, I got to quit being a baby. I got to quit being a little child. I got to grow up. So I got to get in here and get perfected and grow up. Are people thinking that way by and large in the body of Christ? No, you'll find folks that, you know, hadn't been saved three months just get completely indignant if their leader tries to tell them how to pray or how to do anything. Hey, now, now stay out of my life. Well, what do you, who do you think you are? Most, most people don't even have a clue what a pastor is supposed to be or do. And in so many churches, the ministers are hirelings. And because they are, they know that their survival depends on their uh, popularity. Am I right or not? And because of that, it governs what they preach and do. And if they upset somebody, they get concerned because they're about to be out of there. And a whole lot of groups and denominations, they, chur they change pastors like they do undershirts. You want to change them every year or two just to keep things shaken up. Well, what, what is the thing? The people have no concept of why they're having church and what we're supposed to be doing. How many remember what the Lord told us not long after we were in this church? Did He say anything to us about this subject? What did He say? He said, I'm growing this church up quickly. Is that His will? Is that His plan from the Bible? Is that His plan that we grow up? Everybody say grow up. That we may grow up. That we may grow up. Look at your neighbor. Look him in the eye and say, grow up. <laughs> Look back at him and say, okay. Okay, all right. Grow up. Grow up. Is it okay to be a baby for 50 years? Is that the will of God? Is it okay? No. To be a little child after 20 years. 
No, you're supposed to grow up. So you and I, I got it in our sights. Is that right? As for me and my house, as for this church family, we are going to grow up. Right? We don't, we're not playing church. We're not just trying to impress each other. We're not here to waste time and while away the time. We are coming and we're saying, every time we come, we're saying, Lord, what do we need to grow to take the next step? What do we need to get beyond something that's petty and childish and, and babyish? Uh, show it to us. We want to see it. We want to change. We want to grow. Let's grow. Let's grow. That you may grow up. And he gives you one of the big keys there. How do you grow up? Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up. Now go with me, if you would, to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. 1 Corinthians 2. Now, if you weren't here last Sunday, it'd, it'd help you to get the previous message because we're building upon that. But we talked about that the parallel between spiritual development and natural development is tremendous. We already know a lot about spiritual development because we have experienced natural development. And they, they flow the same. That we we're given that comparison repeatedly in the Word. When you're born again, you're not born a fully developed spiritual man. You're born a baby. Just like when you're born in the natural. You're born an infant. How many remember Jesus talked about being born again? In John 3, you must be born again. Born of the... Uh, not just of, of blood and of flesh and water, but of the Spirit. So when you're born again, you're not born an adult. Spiritually, you're born what? See, most people are not even taught that. They just taught, well, you're, you're born again, you're saved, that's it. Just hold on till you get to heaven. No, what's supposed to happen immediately? You're supposed to start growing, Right? And the thing is, naturally, if you get some food just in your natural body and a little bit of exercise, you're going to develop, right. Right? right? Other things being normal, you're going to develop. And, you know, after 20 years, you're not going to be uh, a nursing infant, Amen. right? Physically. But spiritually, that's not so. Right. Spiritually, if you're not fed and you don't exercise spiritually, you can be an infant spiritually after 50 years. And that's what's confusing to a lot of people. Because it's hard for them to look at somebody that's got gray hair and wrinkles and realize that they're a little bitty nursing baby on the inside. Especially if they've got three college degrees. Or own their own business. And have grandkids. You understand what I'm talking about? It's hard to look at that on the outside and, have, and realize they're just a little baby. Spiritually. On the inside. It ought not be though. If you're in the right situation. And you're getting fed the right thing. And you're doing what the Lord directs you to do. That won't happen to you. You will grow. I said you'll grow. Now, in 1 Corinthians 2, look at this. 1 Corinthians 2. Y'all with me this morning? Yes. Believe in with me? Yes. Help me out with your faith I'm talking about. 1 Corinthians 2, he said in verse uh, 9, as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Is he good? Does he have good things prepared for us in this life and the next? But God has revealed them to us. Did he say we'd never know about them? No. 
He's revealed them to us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man save the Spirit of man which is in him? Now last week we talked about that. There is an inner man and there is an outer man. Right? Inner man, outer man. You're not just a mind and a body. You are a spirit. You have a mind. And you live in a body. You can exist, uh, your spirit can exist without your body. Your body can't exist without your spirit. Are you with me on this now? Your body, actually in, in Daniel, the body is referred to as a sheath. Like for a sword. Or like a holster for a pistol or something. Or a rifle. We'd say it like this. It's like a, a glove. Your body is like a glove. And your spirit is like the hand in the glove. You see this arm moving up here. But the reason this arm moves is because there's something inside that arm. You had not heard much about it because you can't see it under a microscope. And we live in a generation that's largely intellectual and foolish. I'm serious. And if they can't see it under a microscope, it doesn't exist. Hmm? And people say, oh, we understand. We have great understanding of life today. We, we can take you to the point of conception. And we can follow as the, as the child develops. And we can take you from one stage to the other. Fine, fine. What causes the child to go from stage one to stage two? Uh... We, we can map the brain and see the synapses firing and what regions of the brain control what regions of the body. Fine. Where does the energy in life come from to get to the brain? They'll go, life. Yeah, where does that come from? See, it is absolutely ignorant to say you don't believe in something because you can't see it. Because the source of every breath you're taking, where does it come from? It's life. And it's spirit. God is spirit. We're created in His likeness and image. We're spirits. You can step out of this body right now and you still exist and you're still you. You still got your mind? No, you don't turn into an angel. That'd be a demotion. Right. You're still you. You still you got your mind. People say, will we recognize one another in heaven? Well, do you recognize one another down here? <laughs> you're going to be you. They're going to be them. Just because you're out of the body doesn't mean you're not you. Amen. Paul said one time, he said, uh, he had an experience when God got caught up to the third heaven and saw and heard things. And he said, whether I was in the body or out of the body, what did he say? I couldn't tell. I've had a few experiences along that line, not, not like that, but uh, along that line, and you can't tell. You can't tell. It's, it's, why? Because you are a spirit. Yes. Yes. Right? You're sitting there looking at me right now through those two windows you call eyes. Your spirit. Well, God intends not just that you develop physically or that you develop mentally, but that you develop spiritually. That the man on the inside get fed and develop and grow up and dominate Amen. your being. Amen. Control your mind, your thinking, your mouth, your body. One of the big reasons why so many people are so defeated in so many areas, they don't control their appetites, they don't control their desires, is because they are weak spiritually. Do you understand? You with me on this? That's why. When your spirit is strong, you control your mind, you control your body. You control your urges. The man on the inside is in charge. Not the flesh. 
You, even though your flesh might have been so dominant at one point, you know, uh, so many people at this point, their, their spirit is so weak, it's not been fed, it's not been developed, and something that's barely even noticeable, you know, the flesh wants to do something it's not supposed to do, and something way down on the inside goes, no, don't do that. No. And the flesh says, shut up, I'm going to do it three times. I want to. <laughs> and just flesh dominated and ruled. Listen, friend, that can be completely turned around. You can feed your spirit and exercise it and develop it until it gets to the point it intimidates your flesh. Your flesh will go, uh, 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 could we, could we? And the spirit says, no, hush. I'll let you know. When and how and if. Okay, all right, all right. I'll just, just ask it. <laughs> your spirit can develop to where you, you, you're in control of your mind. You don't just think anything. You think what you choose to think. You don't just say everything that crosses your mind. You say what you decide to say. And you say it on purpose. You don't just do anything in every impulse and desire that, that comes up in your flesh. You do what's right. And you control yourself. You're spiritual, mature, not a baby kicked around, tossed about to and fro with anything and everything that comes along. Say it out loud, no more children. No longer children. children. Tossed to and fro. We're growing up. We're growing up. I'm growing up in the Lord. Keep reading here. Thank you, Master. He said, verse 12, We've received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but here is a characteristic of a baby, is that they don't receive the, the things of God, their foolishness to them. People who scoff, and, and here, here's the, it's, it's real interesting because some people think they are so intelligent, they are too intelligent to be fooled with stuff like we believe. And they scoff at it, and they don't receive it, and this is foolishness to them what we do. What is that revealing? It's revealing they are unspiritual. They don't discern what's valuable and true. Right? You begin to see the difference between an a, a infant and someone who has some maturity. When you grow up, you don't think the things of God are foolish. Right? When you grow up, you don't think talking in tongues is of the devil. When you grow up, you don't scoff and make little dumb remarks about somebody's prosperity. Did you hear me now? When you grow up, you begin to get very, very interested in the Word of God and the things of God. And they are not foolish to you. Or what other people call foolish, you call precious. They are spiritually discerned. Well, what if your spirit's completely undeveloped? Then you're not going to discern anything spiritually. Verse 15. But he that is spiritual... Judges, or that word is discerns all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. There's something really interesting right here. How many know from some natural experience that uh, adults see things in children that children don't know they see? <laughs> A child... A youth, a teenager, try to pull one over on you. And they don't realize you used to be one. 
and you see them coming a mile away. And you see right through it. But they don't see that you see through them. That's why they try to continue with the ruse. Exactly that same thing is true spiritually. People who have some spiritual development, they see through the other stuff. The, the, the spiritual person discerns all things, yet he himself is what? Judged or discerned of no man. The unspiritual don't know what they're doing or where they're coming from and don't understand them, but they're seeing through them. How many would like to have some discernment, some understanding, to be aware of what's going on instead of being in the dark all the time? To know where people are coming from. And oftentimes to be able to see motives and intentions. Well, babies don't see that. Mature ones see more and more. Hmm? It, it's, how can you put a price on it? It, 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 it is so valuable in life when you're talking to somebody and uh, you learn as you grow up. You, you're looking at them. You're hearing them. The words are bouncing off your eardrums, but you're looking into them. And you're hearing what the Spirit of God is saying to you about what they're saying. I don't know at the times that somebody's been talking, going. Usually the longer they talk, the less it means. I'm going to say that again. Usually the longer they talk, the less it means. Now let me just give you some advice here. The longer you talk and the more you say it, the less people listen to you. The less they pay attention. Because they know that your, word, your, your words are not valuable to you. You don't choose them carefully. You don't esteem and pay attention to what you're saying. Why should they? Hmm. Are y'all with me this morning? Y'all are looking at me kind of funny here. No, no. The Lord wants to give you insight into what's going on. And so I don't know at the times that I've been talking to somebody. They've been talking to me. And while they're talking, the Lord said, that's got nothing to do with it. This is what it is. And it's just a completely different. And you'd have never got it. You could have listened to them for the next 10 years and never found it out. And by looking, and you can lay on the couch and ask questions till you fall off. <laughs> and the Spirit of God can put His finger right through everything and put His finger on what it is. Amen. That's discernment. Yes. That's seeing. Yes. That's understanding. Babies don't see things. Mature ones do. Those who grow up. You want to be a baby? Be in the dark? Be clueless? That's also why that they are tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine and cunning craftiness by lying deceitful people. That's why they're so easily duped and fooled. So they don't have the, the discernment. You and I should be hard to fool. Yeah. Amen. Shouldn't we? Yes. I mean, it just, you know, it, it's, it's a testament against us that we let people fool us and take advantage of us and do stuff to us and we didn't have a clue. We got the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to pick up on things. We, we're supposed to get things, right? Well, they lied to me and they led me astray. Why'd you believe it? Why'd you follow they messed me up. They gave me bad counsel. You didn't have to do it. Right. Why didn't you discern their ulterior motive? Now, don't, don't feel bad. All of us have been fooled about some things, but it's because of why. We were too, ba- too much babies because we got to grow up. Now, that doesn't mean you become suspicious of everybody. <laughs> huh? I've had people look at me and go, I have the gift of discernment. (laughs) You got something and that ain't it. (laughs) You got the gift of suspicion. (laughs) Keep reading. He said, verse 14, The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him, neither can he know them because they are what? Can you discern them because of your great intellect? How much education you have? No amount of education will enable you to do this. I mean, some education is good, but education will not give you this. 
He that is spiritual judges or discerns all things, yet he himself is judged or discerned of no man. Who can know the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But what? We have the mind of what? Of a little bitty baby that doesn't know anything? Huh? Little ignorant in the dark baby? No, no. We have who is the Christ? Who is the the mature, perfect man? The completely mature, anointed man. That's what mind you have. You ought to go around saying it. Say it out loud. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of the mature, the anointed, the developed. I have the mind of Christ. Glory to God. Keep reading. See, this was divided up in chapter and verse by man, but it was written together. What's the next verse say? And, see it flows together, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes, or we'd say babies, in Christ. Not just babies, but babies in Christ. When you're first born again, you are a baby in Christ. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing to be ashamed about. You just got born again. Right? But 10 years later, you ought not be a baby. You ought to be a, you ought to be a child. Right? 20 years later, you ought not be a baby. You ought to be a young adult. Spiritually. Forty years later, you ought not be a baby. Right? You ought to be mature. Spiritually. He said, I, he said, I couldn't talk to you as spiritual. Now here you see, he, he's using the term spiritual, carnal, and baby, we'd, and we could also say adult. Carnal people, if, even if they're born again, they're spiritual babies. If you were mature, you're not going to live and act carnally. See, people will try to tell you, well, you know, they'll try to leave the impression, I am a highly developed, very spiritual individual, but I'm just having trouble with my flesh. <laughs> Have you ever seen that kind of implication? Oh, yeah, I'm, you know, they're a mighty man of God and very spiritual but they just have a lot of trouble with their flesh. And they talk about their flesh like it's a third party belonging to somebody else. <laughs> oh, my flesh. If I could just get rid of my flesh. <laughs> Your flesh is not another person. It's the glove your spirit is in. Your spirit is not another person. That's you. That's who you are. Are you with me now? Yes. And if you're not controlling your flesh, what do we know? You're a baby. I don't care what you think you know. How many scriptures you can quote? If you were mature, you'd be controlling your flesh. Is that right? He said, verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto, up till now, you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. So let's talk about babies. <laughs> but we're having so much fun, aren't we? Can, can you tell? See, I told you last week we were excited about this. We... <laughs> let's talk about babies. When you get born again, how many believe you've been born again? Huh? I'm going to believe that's serious business. You need to know that you know that you've been born again. This, you, you need to know that. If you don't know that, you need to get that fixed before you get out of here this morning. And you can. Jesus has already paid the price. You have to believe Him. Receive on Him. Confess Him as Lord of your life. Believe God raised Him from the dead. Mean it from your heart. Not just mouth words, but then come on and serve Him. Well, if you'll do that, you release your faith, you will be born again. And when you are born, why does he say born again? 
Actually, if you look up the words, it has to do with the idea of being born from above. Being born from above as opposed to being born from beneath. And we, you know, we use this phrase a lot, maybe more than the scripture uses it, but born again. And that, that is applicable because he was talking to Nicodemus about, he says, how can a man be born again another time? Can he enter into his mother's womb the second time? See, he's trying to figure this out. He, he knows what he's talking about. He brought it right back to natural birth. And he said, no, no. You've got to be born not just of water. And you know, when a, when a person is born, the mother's water breaks, as they say. You're surrounded by water. And you're born out of that realm and dimension of flesh and water. But you're also to be born out of the realm of spirit. And it is just as real Amen. as when a baby is born in the natural. Thank you, Lord. Born of the Spirit. And so, when you're born of the Spirit, you're born again, you are a baby. Yes, sir. When people get born again, whether they pray with us over the internet or TV or come down to the altar or just stand in the back and pray, how many understand we've had births yes, sir. in this place yes, sir. and beyond this place? And in the body of Christ, there are births. And when that happens, we got babies. And that's why we talk about, you know, we have guys that do some follow-up and some things, but then we encourage you, help us to check on these babies. Why? Because they're babies. Babies don't do anything for themselves. Do they? And we don't expect them to. You know? We don't just... You know, after the baby's born, go home. <laughs> and somebody said, where's the baby? said, well, we expect they'll be along after a while. <laughs> if there's anything to them, they'll show up. <laughs> well, who's going to feed the baby? Well, let him feed himself. I have to feed myself. <laughs> no, no, babies need help. Babies need others to do for them. And you and I need to be ready to step up with spiritual babies, right? Even though they might be in a 50, 60, 70-year-old body, we got to realize they are a brand new baby. We need to help them learn how to pray, help them learn how to believe God, help them learn how to eat, right? We need to help them with everything. And if they don't know they need help like that, well, we need to help them as much as they'll let us anyway because they need it. They don't know how. Babies need somebody else to do things for them. I'm so glad I'm not laying in the crib. Amen. Helpless. Amen. Can't change my own pants. Can't put on my own socks. Have to eat whatever somebody sticks in my mouth. I'm glad today. <laughs> and I can wear whatever bitches I want to wear. Put in my mouth what I want to eat. Right? It's good. To grow up and not be completely dependent on somebody else for everything. <clears throat> Spiritual babies look to somebody else for everything. You do my praying for me. You believe for me. You give me the answer. You tell me what to do. You show me. Spiritual babies, they take their problems and they just come throw them on you and go, huh, fix it. <laughs> Tell me what to do. That describes half the church. I'm talking about in the body of Christ. Y'all going to help me with this or not? I, I just, I don't feel the love right now. <laughs> <laughs> truth speaking the truth in love may grow up you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free do, do you understand I, I, I wish I could say half but I think it's way, way, way more than half of the churches in this county and in this state and in this nation 
They think that's why they hire pastors. To do their praying for them and their believing for them and all their visitation for them and to do all their ministry for them. So they can do what? Huh? And if they have anything, they want to come dump it on somebody and say, Here, fix this. Right? Well, what is that? That's a baby. Well, if you were born again last week, that's okay. We want to help you. And we are. We are continuously. Us, our staff, and you, we are continuously doing things like this. But you need to have discernment, and I need to have discernment, that we don't just continue to do this for 40-year-old babies. Hmm? I mean, if you're down and got both legs broke and, and are in traction, and you ask me to come do your laundry and cut your grass, I might. But after you've been healed for six months, and you want to lay up on the couch and drink iced tea and eat tater chips while I do your laundry, well, no thanks. I have plenty of stuff to do without doing your stuff. Right? Well, that's real to us in the natural, but it has not been real to us spiritually. I, if I, I, I can't even count the times I've had people come to me and go, Oh, Brother Keith, every time you pray, would you pray for me? <laughs> I am not. Every time I pray, I'm going to pray for you. The big question is, why? Why? And you ask people, what about? They'll go, oh, I just, everything. I just, I just, I just need, I, I need help. Would you pray for me, Brother King? Why can't you pray for yourself? And people get insulted when you see them. They'll go, hmm. Watch out, they're tuning up. Watch out. What you going to have a big cry on your hands? What do we know we got? Baby. We got us a little baby. <laughs> and that's okay if they just got saved. If they just got saved, you ought, you ought not be rough. You ought to go, that's all right, baby. Yeah, yeah, I'll pray for you. Yeah, we'll help you. But when they've been in church for 20 years, can quote as much scripture as you. You need to look up and go, pray for yourself. I got plenty to do. I'm serious. Believe for yourself. In fact, won't you help me believe? Put your shoulder to some of this we're dealing with. See, babies live in a small world. That they are the center of. Right. I'm going to go over that again real slow. <laughs> babies. Now think about it. Think about babies. Laying in the crib. What is their world? What is their world? It, they, it's a small world. At the moment it may be only as big as that crib. And whatever mobile is moving over them. <laughs> right? <laughs> Are they aware of uh, the presidency and the government and the economy? Ain't got a clue about none of it. Or what mom and daddy's having to do? Or, not a clue. They live in a very small, tiny world that they are the center of. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Do you understand what our society is like? People will run over you in the stores, in the parking, and not even see you. Right? 
They will run over you by foot or by car or by grocery shopping cart. They will run over you, right? Why? And not even know it. Why? They are living in a tiny world (laughs) that they are the center of. And the only thing they are aware of is what pertains to them. That's a baby. Do you want to be that way? No. See, babies will walk into a room and all they think about is what everybody is thinking and doing or not doing about me. (laughs) I've had people come to me and go, I went in that room and I think they were all talking about me. I said, I know those guys, and I think they have better things to talk about. I think they have weightier issues on their mind than your little goofy feelings. (laughs) That's why some people don't like churches like this. They don't want to hear this. They want to go somewhere where they can dump everything in somebody else's lap and the only thing they ever get is a coddle. Hmm? And no, and no matter what's going on, they can just come running and go, ah, and they'll just pat them and burp them and go, that's all right, baby. Just get it out. Just get it out. Just get it out. And they want to vent. (laughs) Babies do a lot of venting. I won't go into all that. But they they do a lot of venting. (laughs) And it's not pretty and it's not nice. But they're babies. So we tolerate it and we take care of them. But not for 20 years. After five years, 10 years, 15 years, somebody needs to pull up their own pants. <laughs> somebody needs to feed their self. Right? And somebody needs to begin to grow up and take responsibilities in the family and do work and help pull their weight and do jobs. I've had people write us little notes about, well, now not everybody, you know, is going to have to do something in the church. We just feel like we're just supposed to come and sit and learn. (laughs) The majority of your learning is from doing. Doing. If you're full-time ministry somewhere else and dropping in here on service time to get fed, I understand that. But if you're fishing and playing golf most of the time and you all you're going to do is come in here and sit, that ain't okay. Amen. Well, I'll find me somewhere else to go to church. Well, I guess you will. <laughs> you little baby. <laughs> but if you're serious about serving God and you want to lift up your eyes and go, Jesus, I don't want to be a baby all my life. I want to grow up and be like you. I want to grow up and do something in the kingdom like you then you're at the right place. You're at the right place. We're going to feed. Yeah, we're going to serve some milk, but we're going to get into some meat. We're going to pull out some big roasts. We're going to pull out some big T-bone steaks. We're going to pull out some big, hallelujah, meat as well. And we're going to eat. And we're going to put some muscle on our bones. And we're going to get some strength. We're going to get some ability. We're going to quit coming and dumping everything on everybody else. We're going to grow up and learn not to burden other people with what we're dealing with when we can deal with it ourselves and take care of it. 
Instead of burdening other people and asking them to pray for every little thing and fix every little thing for us, we are taking care of ours by the grace of God and now helping somebody else with theirs. Then when we do have people who are legitimately babies, they just got saved, well, we plenty of people are able to help them instead of every, everybody trying to help the 20-year-old babies. Right? right? Hallelujah. Babies can't handle much. Did you see this? Read, read that verse again. He said, I couldn't talk to you like spiritual. I couldn't talk to you like adults. Do you understand that babies, even when they begin to first talk, they can ask you things you can't tell them. You could tell them and they wouldn't have a clue what you were talking about. They don't have, a, you can't talk to them like adults because they don't have the reference. They don't have the understanding. Same thing is true spiritually. And he's telling them, he said, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you like spiritual adults. I couldn't give you spiritual meat. I had to give you milk. Right? Because why? What did it say? Because why? You weren't able. You weren't able to receive it. And what did he go on to say? You're still not. Will you automatically become able just by reason of time? And by, no, you won't. Decades can pass and you still be unable to hear and think and receive greater things. Utterance is affected so much by the hearers. And I'm, a, I'm actually pleased of how we've been able to progress in utterance in this church and meetings. I'm pleased. A lot of you have taken this to heart and you are believing with us to get revelation out, right? You, you're doing it. It's happening. But it's just the beginning. Amen. Just the beginning. But do you understand, the more we have a nucleus of people growing up, what's that going to affect? How's that going to affect the utterance? What if 95% of the group is babies? Then I would be foolish to try to feed babies T-bones. What would you hear throughout the crowd? <laughs> Choking. Just major choking. <laughs> right? Don't feed T-bones to babies. You're a fool if you do. Right? Now, you, 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 that, that doesn't just apply to me. It applies to you and all your friends and all your relatives. Some folk, bless your hearts, <laughs> you've been trying to feed them a roast. And they need a little two ounce. Two ounce of milk. They need just a little bit of milk. And, and to you, it just seems like, man, that didn't even start it. That even the ABC. I know they're babies. That's all they can take right now. Just give them a little bit and go, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Do you understand? You got to know who you're dealing with. You're trying to minister to somebody. Don't just look at their age chronologically, physically. you got to discern who am I dealing with spiritually here. Am I dealing with a little baby? Am I dealing with somebody who's got some maturity? Because that affects what they are able to receive. Babies are not able to handle much. They can't receive much. They can't deal with much. Any little old thing. How many understand uh, the, the diaper gets a little uncomfortable? Hmm? Can babies just lay there and go, this doesn't bother me. I'm not moved by what I feel. Mom will take care of this soon, so I'm just going to lay here and praise the Lord. Huh? Babies, if they're hungry and their stomach's growling, they'll say, be quiet, stomach. You'll eat when I say you eat. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Babies can't take much. A little something strike them. It don't have to be much. Just, just a little bit. What do you see? You, you see it coming, can't you? It doesn't have to be anything. It can be 
their, their diaper's a little tight on one side. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be anything. Right? They saw something and didn't like the way it looked. It, anything, babies can't take much. Any little old thing will set them off. Where can we go with that? <laughs> Spiritual babies can't take anything. Any little old thing. They looked hard at me. They didn't even shake my hand. They didn't even acknowledge me. I just don't know. Start crying, start tuning up. Any little thing. How about adults though? Adults learn. Yeah. Right? That if your britches are a little tight, you deal with it. <laughs> right? You're a little warm. You don't, you know, you don't get up in front and go, mm, 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 mm. what's wrong? I'm hot. <laughs> Make it stop. Make it stop. I'm getting hot. <laughs> How is that babies, that's their solution for everything. They don't care what it is, you know, they get a little hungry. Mm, 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 mm. What's, what's wrong, baby? I'm hungry. Make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> it would be funny. But we've got. 30, 40, 50, 60 year olds. They don't do it exactly like that, but it's almost. Right? Right? Something they don't like, something bothers them, something rubs them the wrong way. They can't take anything. They're going to whine about it. They're going to complain about it. They're going to find fault about it. They're going to talk about it. They can't handle anything. Adults can handle things. Can't they? Warriors can handle a lot. Can't they? How many want to be uh, the Lord's warrior? You want to be somebody. How many understand? Warriors, the Bible said, endure hardness as a good soldier. Do what? What shows that you are a mature, not only a mature, but one that can serve. On the front lines, you got to be able to endure some stuff. Right? Soldiers have to deal with some things. Right? They can't hear a shell go, and they go, make it stop. Make it stop. Is that a gun? Is that a real... Real soldiers, real warriors can be bleeding, can be cut, can be shot, can be hurt, can be burnt, and they'll pick up the flag. And they will push through. And they'll deal with it and heal up later. But they will get the job done that they were sent to do. And God has got to have some men, some women, some warriors, some soldiers that don't sit around and think about how they feel all the time. What somebody didn't do for them and all this silly, petty, baby stuff. Somebody that will stand up and will endure some stuff. Can handle some stuff. Well, if you hadn't learned that about ministry, you better learn it. You got to deal with some stuff. You got to be able to handle some stuff. Boy, there have been some times in our life where you just wonder, man, how much more can be piled on? But what do you do? Got to be a man. Got to be a mature one. You got to stand up and shake it off and go, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things. Through Christ. And I don't want to run and grab Brother Copeland or, or Brother Hagen or so and say, you know, would you help me? They got plenty of stuff to deal with. They're saying, I need to be helping them. Amen. 
See, babies don't think that way. Babies think, oh, goody, I have access to a man of God. Let me ask him every question I ever thought of in my life. <laughs> and everything I need, I'll get him to pray about it. And you're a little baby. And you're not a good help. You'll be pulling on them. When, when the Lord joined Phyllis and myself to Brother Hagen Sr. and Miss Aretha, I knew that from the beginning he had allowed us access to them personally. We're with them. We traveled with them and ate with them and packed with them and unpacked and personally. And I knew I we're in that kind of close proximity to the man and woman of God, they're ministering all the time. So when they get a chance to rest, they don't need me pulling on them. See, babies don't even think about that. They just think, oh, I, I can pull on them. It's the last thing they need is somebody else pulling on them. Right. If you're supposed to be helping them, you're not supposed to be pulling on them. Right? right. And so I, I, t I sat down with Phyllis and we talked about it. I said, listen, I said, he's a prophet. He's a man of God. He discerns things. If you and I are having trouble, he'll pick it up in his spirit. Yeah. If we're fretting and anxious and scared about our money and about our this and that, he'll pick it up. And it'll pull on him. Even if he don't say anything, he'll be aware of it. And our anxiety, he'll have to deal with some way, some form or fashion. I said, so let's purpose. We are not. Amen. We got something to deal with. We deal with it and get it done before we get in their presence. We get it fixed. We come in there in faith and in love. See, carnal babies are takers. That's all they're interested in is taking something from you. They want you to do something for them. Spiritual people are givers. They want to give you something. They're not there to get something from you. They're there to give you something. They're there to do something for you. And I'm telling you, the Lord blessed us and helped us with that. And it allowed us to have a long uh, duration of ministry. Can you say amen? amen? Keep reading. Tell me about babies. Oh, my word. What happened to the time? I thought... I thought I had time. Uh, would y'all pray with me about this time deal? I'm serious. I'm serious about this. I, I feel like at times I go too long. And it's bothered me a little bit. I'm serious. I don't want to go too, I don't have to go too long. But uh, I don't want to cut you short either. I don't want to, you know, I like to go to the, I feel like I'm released in my spirit. So I'm, I'm seriously, pray for me. Pray with me about this. If it's better for me to go less time and cut it off, I want to do it. I'll do it. But if not, I want to do what I'm supposed to do. I don't want to be led by somebody's impetuous flesh that I'm picking up either. I don't want to be led by that either. I don't want to do either way. I don't want to go too long or too short. So just right. Would you believe with me on that? Would you pray, pray for me about that? Help me with that. Uh, tell me about babies. What about babies? Miss says they're cute. Yeah, they are. But, <laughs> but they're supposed to grow up. Babies are wonderful. They are. They're wonderful. Wonderful. But they're supposed to grow up. Babies can't handle much. The next thing, let's read that, and I think I can, I can wind it up. He said, you were not able to receive this, to bear it, neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal, for whereas there's among you envying, strife, and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men, one translation talks about as mere unsaved men. Mere unsaved men. So I'm just giving you two basic things today about babies. One, we said, you know, babies, they can't do anything for themselves. But after that, these other two here, babies can't handle much. They can't receive much. They can't, they can't eat solid food. They, they can't handle discomfort or they can't endure hardness. Any little thing, they're going to tune up and cry and whine and carry on. Also, you'll see this, he's talking about, they were, uh, re read that verse again, did he talk about envy 
and strife. Babies are fussy. Babies are fussy. You got so many people that think they're so spiritual and yet they are always fussing with somebody about something. They'll even call it, well, it's about doctrine. Fussing is fussing. Well, I'm, yeah, but we have disagreements about I, you, Brother Hagin used to say this. He said, you can disagree without being disagreeable. You don't have to agree with everybody on everything, but to be fussy and strive. And, and, and you know, you, you, you want to respond and you want to retaliate and, and you get mad and you get upset. That's being a baby. I said, that's being a baby. You shouldn't let everything rub you the wrong way. Say it out loud. I am not fussy. I'm not a fusser. I'm not a fighter. I'm not an arguer. You do know that a lot of people are. They'll just, I mean, just for the spite. You say it's white, they'll say it's black. You say up, they'll say down. They just like to fuss. They like to argue. I've met preachers that way. I mean, from the time I got there to do a meeting, I could tell they're trying to fuss about something. What do you believe about this? What do you think about this? And finally, on some things, they had to say, well, you know, we might not agree on that, but, you know, we're both saved. We love the Lord. We're going to have a good meeting. Amen. Well, what do, you, what do you think about this? Well, okay, I won't preach on that in your church if you don't want me to. Fine. Well, I don't believe in that. Okay. <laughs> Fine. There's plenty of other stuff in the Bible for us to talk about. Right? Amen. But now, see, babies, that ain't good enough. They want a fuss. They won't. To fuss. They're ready to fuss about anything. Husbands and wives. Fuss, fuss, fuss because they're babies. I know one of the biggest things that has helped Phyllis and me in our marriage is we simply grew up some. We just grew up some. Just growing up will solve a lot of your problems. Right? It just works so much better. If a little thing comes up and she don't look at me and go, hmm, 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 and then I go, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Thank God we've grown a little bit and we can act like adults and realize now's not the time to talk about that. Now's not the time to push that. Don't push it anyway. Now's the time to believe God. Pray about it. Let's give it some space. Let's get some wisdom on it. Right? Just just grow. No, babies, no, no. Babies, they got to jump into it. They got to fuss. They got to fight. They got to have their say. They got to have their way, even if it tears the whole house up. Say it out loud. I'm not a baby. I'm growing up. I'm not fussy. I'm not an arguer. I can handle things. I can deal with a lot, with a lot. By, the by the grace of God. Praise God. Stand on your feet if you would. Boy, we're having fun, aren't we? <laughs> Woo. Growing up. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Begin to thank the Lord for His Word, for His Spirit. He loves us so much. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, lift up your hands. Tell him you worship him. Lord, I worship you. I worship you. Thank you for loving me and not leaving me a little baby, but growing me up in you, enabling me, teaching me, helping me to become a mature one, a spiritual man, Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible said, everyone the Lord loves, He corrects. He changed. Why, why is He helping us with this? He loves us. He doesn't want to see us babies. So let's tell, tell Him that we love Him. Oh, 
How I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Because, because he first loved me. Sing it again. Everybody say, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, 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 oh how I love Jesus. How I love my Jesus. So oh, 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 how I love Jesus Oh, because He first loved me Lord, we thank You. You're helping us because You love us. You love us too much to just watch us be babies for the rest of our life. Babies don't enjoy the rich things. They don't get into things that adults do. And you're bringing us into it. Thank you for it. Hallelujah. I want everybody to say this. Close your eyes. We talked about being born again. If you've not been, you can be right where you stand right now. Watching by TV, watching by internet. It's real simple. Jesus has already paid the price. Everybody say it out loud. Affirm or reaffirm your faith. Say, Father God, I believe in you. I believe you love the whole world so much that you gave us Jesus. That he died on the cross, paid the full price for all my sins. I believe you've raised him from the dead. He's alive right now, King of kings, Lord of lords, soon to come again. Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Savior, my Master. Thank you for receiving me, saving me, cleansing me, setting me free. I receive you. As you help me, I will serve you and live for you all my days. Oh, hallelujah. Sing it again. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. You can be seated. Ushers, would you come? Let's get ready to serve the people. We're going to receive communion together today. Now listen, if you watch uh, by internet and uh, you join with us regularly, realize that we have communion. We observe it together on the first Sunday of each month. So you have you some communion elements uh, there at your home, at your desk, if you're not able to get to church or you're out in a remote region or something, uh, you join with us and observe and partake of communion with us. Keep your eyes open until you're served. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but
not been served, would you raise your hand? We don't want anybody to be missed. Nobody should be left out. If you confessed that word just a moment ago and prayed that prayer, even if you weren't saved before you came in, you are now. And even if you've made mistakes, that's why he shed his blood. You can repent right now and make it right and get clean. Everybody should join in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Jesus Christ, thank you for the blood. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the Jesus Christ, thank you for the blood. I am clean by the blood. I am clean by the blood. I'm clean by the blood. Jesus Christ, thank you for the blood. I am free by the blood. I am free by the blood. I am free by the blood. says, 1 Peter 2, 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word of God that you may grow thereby. In John 6, Jesus said this, it, it caused so much controversy that large numbers of his partners left him and no longer came to his meetings, no longer supported him. Jesus we're talking about. He said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats, eateth, eats and keeps on eating, my flesh 
and drinketh, drinks and keeps on drinking. My blood dwells in me and I in him. Well, they scoffed. And how's this man going to give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said, it's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. How many know that he is the word made flesh? So when you eat of his flesh, you eat of the word. He is the word made flesh. Stand up on your feet. Hold up the elements, the bread that is for now. He said, I received of the Lord that which I delivered to you that the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And after he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Hold up the, the element of the bread. Say it out loud, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, honor your body. I honor your body. The Word, the word. Made, flesh. made flesh. I honor this. And I say, I will eat your flesh. I will eat your word. Thank you for feeding me that I may grow and have life by your word. Break and eat. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say it out loud. I'm being fed. I'm eating eating spiritual bread. bread. I'm being fed. I'm being fed. I'm I'm eating eating spiritual bread bread. and and growing up. Hold up the cup. The Bible said, after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, and he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Yes, we know that by the blood the price is paid, our sins are washed away. The Bible said the life is in the blood. There's a connection, a wonderful connection we don't know much about between the blood and the spirit. To say the life is in the blood is saying the spirit is in the blood. There's a connection, wonderful connection. And when Jesus poured out his life's blood, what did he pour out? He said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When he he expired from the flesh, he gave his spirit. When he gave his blood, he gave his life. So said out loud, thank you, Lord, for the precious precious blood of the Lamb. The life of God is in that blood. It gives life to me, spiritual life, to grow up, to be like you. Thank you for washing me, cleansing me, giving me life by the blood. Drink. Hallelujah. Receive the life of God. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we exalt you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We bless your holy name. Thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. Glory to God. We are thankful to Him for all He has done. If you prayed the prayer of salvation with us today for the first time or got back to God in this room, there'll be people standing along the front here afterwards ready to talk to you, answer your questions. You got questions about being filled with the Spirit or any of these things.
If you're watching by TV or internet, call us, write us, email us. Let us talk with you and encourage you. You're not alone. You're in the family of God now. Phyllis and I want to thank you again for your kindness to us. Uh, Just, you know, reading the cards and uh, then looking at your faces today, we really love you. And we know that you love us. And it's a very precious thing. How do you express it? How do you say it? It's something of God. What God has joined together, don't let any man or devil separate. Right? Thank you. Uh, You've honored us. We thank you. We love you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's sing as we go. The greater ones in me. The greater ones in me. My Holy Spirit is living in me. The greater ones in me. The greater ones in me. The mighty Holy Spirit.